You are watching Econom TV, the unofficial broadcaster of economics for South African students. In today's episode, Chapter 3 and the Circular Flow of Economic Activity. Now, we already know that individuals or households have unlimited wants. They are also the owners of the scarce factors of production, capital, labor, natural resources, and entrepreneurship. Scarcity means that choices have to be made, and once you choose, there is opportunity cost. Economists see a circular flow of economic activity. Households have needs and wants, and they require goods and services to consume to satisfy their needs and wants. However, they don't have goods or services. They are the owners of the factors of production. But you can't eat your labor or dress up in your capital. The consequence is that the households have to take their factors of production to the market for the factors of production. There, they sell it to the firms who use these different factors of production to produce goods and services. The households buy those goods and services on the market for goods and services. They then take it home and consume it to maximum utility. If there is a flow of factors of production and goods and services in the one direction, there is also a flow of payments in the opposite direction. We start with the households who have unlimited needs and wants but require goods and services to satisfy those. They are, however, the owners of the factors of production and they offer their capital, labor, natural resources and entrepreneurship for sale or for rent in the market for the factors of production. In return, they receive interest, wages, rent and profit. The factors of production flow to the firms and they pay for these different factors of production. These are then used to produce goods and services which the firms offer in the market for goods and services. The households buy these goods and services and they use their return on the factors of production to pay for those goods and services flowing back to the firms. It's possible to have a closer look at the firms and the households in the circular flow. The households are described as any group of people living together and making economic decisions together. These can be individuals or a whole family of people. The aim of consumption is to maximize utility and it's the households who decide what is produced in the economy. So they offer their factors of production, receive payment for it and use that payment to buy goods and services. So whatever they are paying for, the firms will produce. Their income is derived from the different factors of production. Their spending is on goods and services. In the total demand equation for the macro economy, the household's activity is denoted with a capital C, indicating consumption expenditure. The firms are the productive units in this circular flow. They aim to produce goods and services and sell it at a maximum profit in the market for goods and services. It's the firms that decide how to produce, whether the production process will be more labor intensive or more capital intensive. The income that the firms receive is from the sale of goods and services in the market for goods and services. Their spending is on the factors of production. So they pay capital interest, the labor receive wages, natural resources get rent, and the entrepreneurs take home profit. In the total demand equation, the firm's activities are indicated with a capital I. Overall, the factors of production and goods and services circulate in the one direction in this economy. And incomes and spending on goods and services or on factors of production circulates in the opposite direction. The values of these three flows should always be equal in a closed system. It is possible to add more players to this system. And in the next few slides, we'll be looking at 
the government, the foreign sector and the financial sector and how they can be added to the basic circular flow of economic activity. When we refer to the government, this is the broadest possible definition of government. It's more than just the central government and its departments and encompasses the provincial governments, local governments, parastatals and basically we look at the public sector as a whole. The primary function of this government is to provide the public goods and services that we already mentioned in the previous chapter. Those goods and services that will not be provided efficiently or optimally by the market. How does the government participate in this circular flow? The best is to have a quick look at the diagram. The government sits in the middle of the circular flow and collects taxes from the households and the firms in the circular flow. These taxes are then used in the production and provision of public goods and services. Government has to go to the factor market and employ labor and capital. That's where the public servants come into the story. They also go to the goods market and buy goods and services that they use in the production of public goods and services. Both the households and the firms benefit from public goods and services, like for example the street lights or national defense. It is important to note that the taxes are considered a leakage from the flow of income and spending. And government's provision of public goods and services are an injection into the stream of production, income and spending. When we talk about the foreign sector, it is the rest of the world and their economic activities. South Africa, for example, is an open economy. Not all the goods and services that we are able to consume in South Africa are produced locally. Some are imported. And not all the goods and services that we produce are consumed in South Africa. Some of them are exported. All these transactions are recorded in the balance of payments. And it's possible to add the foreign sector to the circular flow of economic activity. When South Africans consume imported goods and services, the payment for those imports are considered a leakage from the circular flow of spending and income. When we export goods and services and we get paid in foreign currency, those payments are considered an injection into the stream of spending and income. Finally, there's the financial sector. In this case, the financial sector is seen as an intermediary between so-called surplus and deficit units in the economy. Some households and firms have surpluses of money, savings in other words, that they would like to do something with. Others have deficits. They need funding in order to invest in projects, buildings, or in the case of households, houses and cars. Now, you don't need to find someone with a surplus of savings in order to borrow from them. The financial sector steps in between and provides the role of an intermediary between those that have savings and those that need to make investments. In this simple circular flow, the households and the firms have some savings which they deposit in the financial sector. The financial sector aggregates this money and loans it to the firms to make investments in machinery, equipment or even whole plants. The savings are considered a leakage from the stream of spending and income and the investments are an injection. When all the different players are considered together, it's possible to put together an equation for the total spending in this economy. Total spending or total demand will consist of the household's consumption expenditure plus the firm's investment expenditure, government's con government consumption expenditure, spending on exports by foreigners and our spending on imported goods and services. All this adds up to the total demand. It's also possible to look at this story as one of three gaps. Once you have the 
closed economy with households and firms and the circular flow of activities, the added participants make for three gaps in the stream of income and spending. There is the difference between investment and savings, the difference between government spending and taxation, and then the difference between exports and imports. These three gaps need to balance in order to provide macroeconomic stability. So did we achieve the outcomes of this chapter? Can you explain and draw the three flows in the economy? Can you identify the role of key players and describe them? Can you describe the two types of markets? And can you draw the circular flow of economic activity? For more information, have a look at Chapter 3 in Moren Furi, and there are additional resources available on Eafundi. Answer the quiz questions, and finally, follow at Econoom on Twitter.